Hello, uh, I'm Berenice Batu, and now I will talk, explain you how to create a new uh, training materials for the Galaxy Training Network. So if you go to the training.galaxyproject.org, um, the tutorial that I will uh, follow now, uh, you can find it in the contributing to the training uh, material, Galaxy Training Materials. And if you click there, you go to the first uh, tutorial that is called creating a new tutorials. And you go to the end out section. Um, so as you probably know, because you are there, Galaxy is really a great solution to train bioinformatics concepts, but not only bioinformatics, um, because it, there is numerous bioinformatics tools available, more than 8,000 of the tool set. Um, it can be used by people without any computer science skills in trains, and it trains also to use the technology um, outlining the available resources and efforts that I made available and accessible to research, and it's scalable. So in um, a few years ago, the Galaxy Training Network decided to set up a new infrastructure to easily deliver uh, Galaxy-related training materials. And the idea was to develop really something that is open online and based on the community um, to to, to, to provide all these training resources and that uh, can be used Galaxy uh, at the training uh, resources. So we took the inspiration from the software camera tree. Um, if you don't know, I can just recommend you to look at what is Carpentries. Uh, it's an amazing uh, training uh, communities. And so we collected uh, everything, all the materials on one GitHub repository that is uh, uh, um, under Galaxy project uh, and slash training materials. And so we decided for a structure, we're focusing on tutorials. So like this, the one you have here with hands on activities for both fitting uh, online self-training. So for people that want to learn on their own, but also for uh, instructors that give workshops. So the, each tutorials follow the same structures, and they usually come with some uh, information to, that can make that available on ga different Galaxy instances. So here we'll, I will teach you and I will show you how to create a new tutorials by developing a small tutorials, um, and then we will take a small examples for that um, on for creating a tutorials to explain how to retrieve uh, climate data from Copernicus using a, one, just one tool, the Copernicus climate data store tool. Um, so these tutorials, I will uh, extend the different steps to create a tutorials, but may, you may need some extra knowledge that uh, I will just mention, and I will point you to interesting resources for that if you need. So for example, it could be great for you to know a bit of Git or inter Git uh, interaction of GitHub, and we developed it several uh, some some tutorials for that. But if if it's not possible, if you don't have the time to learn, or if you if you if, if it's too much for you, you can always uh, create the skeleton of the tutorials uh, as I will show you now, and then you can uh, share that uh, skeleton with us and by opening an issue on GitHub or writing us on Gitter or by email, and then we will uh, make, take care of that. So the first things we need to do when we create a tutorial, a new tutorial is, that is uh, to choose in which topics we want to store these tutorials. So because if we look at the GitHub repository, um, I can go there. So the GitHub repository where we store all the materials. Um, so here at the repository, uh, everything is stored on the, all the materials is stored in the topics there. And you see the different topics available uh, here. So the first steps when we need to create a new tutorials is to define in which topics we want to, to store these tutorials. Um, so we have, uh, we decided that for that, uh, we recommend you to use the category that are done for the tool set. So, we go to the tool shed and you can search for the main tools uh, that are used for your tutorial. Um, so it's then meaning that you know which tutors, which tools you want to use for your tutorials. And when you do that, the first things you do is to search for these, tut for these tools. So for example, here we know that we want to use Copernicus. So we search for Copernicus. Uh, you see that it's the first one here. 
And then we go to the category uh, there and we see that the category as, uh, associated to, to that tools is called uh, climate analysis here. So it's a, and we can compare, we can check if there is a climate topic available here. And we see that there is already one climate topic available. So the tutorial that we plan to develop will be uh, in the topic climate. If your tools are different categories, then it's uh, possible that um, it's, um, so you have across uh, different uh, categories or if the topic is not available on there, um, you can ask us on Gitter or you can raise an issue to explain the aim of the, of, and if it's not clear for you, you can uh, ask us on Gitter or on GitHub um, and we will be happy to help you defining the best topic for your, for your tutorial there. And if you need really a new topic because none of the topics are fitting really, uh, we have created a tutorial to explain uh, how to, to, to create a new topic there. So currently, so we know that here it's climate analysis and we can, we can see there we need, to, we, we have already a climate topic available. So now, um, so for each topic, so if we go in the climate, we can see that we have different folder for the climate um climate topics and we have one that is called tutorials and so it's where we store the different tutorials so one folder per tutorials um, and then in I, the tutorials you see that you have a tutorial.md file um, you can have here you don't have any so you have a bib tech file if you want or you can have also slide.html um, and do I have an example? Not in this case, in this uh, in, in this topic, but you have also what uh, here you can see. So here is the structure of, of a topics folder. So with some metadata extra, but then in the tutorial folder here for one tutorial. So you have, you can have, you should have, a, yeah, you can have a tutorial.md, a slide.html, some file that is called data-library.yaml file. Um, a workflow folder with workflow.ga. So we will focus on the first uh, items. So the tutorial.md that I will explain you how to generate that. It's also optional to have slide.html. And some tutorials are only slides, for example, and no tutorials at all. So it's always possible to add both. Um, and the, so one thing we recommend you is when you create a the tutorial is to create first a workflow. Why? Because most of the our tutorials try to follow the approach learning by doing. So the idea is to combine both theoretical and practical sections done in Galaxy. So we usually try to follow and reproduce, maybe it's going to be reproducing a paper, reproducing a specific analysis step by step by running the different tools that are needed to, to, to do this analysis. And so the different steps that are taken in the tutorials can be represented as a workflow within Galaxy. So before writing the tutorials, it's usually a good practice to get at least uh, an, a workflow, a first version of the workflows with the different steps that will be run during, during the tutorials. So this workflow doesn't have to be the latest version, the, 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 the final version of, of, the, of what will be really done in the tutorials, it's just mostly to get the first the main step that will be happen in the tutorials. It's also helping you to structure what do you want uh, to 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 give to to teach in your tutorial there. Um, just to mention, so we recommend you to use in your workflow, especially for training the tools that are available on the tool set. So because if you, for example, use your own Galaxy instance. You may have some tools that are specific to your Galaxy instance, but that can not be, uh, then it's make this tutorial specific to your Galaxy instance. And what we try to store at least in the Galaxy training network is mostly uh, tutorials that can be run on several Galaxy instances. So it's better if the tools are available on the tool shed. So to do, to, to create your workflow, um, then you can go to your favorite uh, Galaxy server. So I will go to the European Galaxy server. So use galaxy.eu. And I will create my, my workflow from, some, from scratch. So I go to workflow there. Um, and then I create a small workflow 
with only one step that will be the Copernicus um, step. So I can, oh, I need to first name the workflow. So it will be workflow for GTN climate, climate tutorial. Okay, I create that. And then, uh, as I said, so I want first the Copernicus uh, to be used. So I search for the tool Copernicus. I search for the tool Copernicus. Okay, the search took some time, sorry for that. Um, Copernicus data source. And then I need one input, so I can add one input data set here and that I can connect to my Copernicus. Um, and then I can change the, the name of that. So here it's in the, the input is API requests file. Okay, and then I can save my workflow. And so I follow these different steps. And then what I need to do is also to add, uh, to annotate my, my workflow. So what I do is I need to create a, a, something that is there in the annotations. I need to put here the name of the tutorial that I will use. So here I will name it retrieve um, climate. The name will be retrieve, sorry, retrieve climate data from Copernicus will be in the name of my tutorial. Um, oh, sorry, wrong. So it's not here. So here it's, I need to first click to edit, to add some metadata to my tutorials, to my, sorry, to my workflow. I go to edit attributes and then I need an annotation that is the name of my tutorial that I will use there. And here in the tag, I need to put the name of the topic. Name. So here it's climate. So I have now, I can save my workflow and I keep that this way for now. So I created now uh, my workflow for the trainings. The next steps is uh, I have my workflow. I know so, so diff, the main step of my workflow, but now I need some data to run my workflow on to illustrate the different step of my workflow and show the different results that can happen to do, comment on them. Um, and for that, so, the data must be informative to illustrate the different steps and the meaning of the different steps, uh, but not too big to, uh, to take too long uh, waiting time for processing during a workshop. Um, so it's, it's really tricky to, to, to get the good toy data sets um, because really we should try to keep the run times no more than 50 minutes. Uh, it can be more, but then you need to be sure and uh, to comment and, and be sure that the people know about that. But so we have different, so we give here two examples of how you can create a small data set. So you can create from scratch. So you can maybe get one, for example, uh, get in a 69 sequences, um, blast it against a reference genome, and then you can get some, it's you, so you can create from scratch your data sets. Or another thing that I usually do when I create tutorials is to create a tutorial data set from an existing larger one. So from an existing data set. So I usually run the same, the complete workflow that I will use for my teaching. Um, and because most of the time you have some, some, for example, if you do for sequences, when you have a different steps, usually you lose some sequencing as the different steps. So for example, if you do first a quality control, after the quality control, some reads are removed. So you, you have these step, different steps. Or if you do a mapping, some of the read will map, some of the read will never map. So usually what I will do is uh, run the full workflow and then I extract for each of the, uh, the different steps, um, I extract some of the reads that were removed, but also some of the reads that passed through the different steps. So there, and then I combine that on the different levels to get a uh, complete workflow that uh, uh, small data sets, smaller data sets than the input ones, uh, but still with meaningful information that will be, will be removed or will be kept at the, each of the steps. 
So it can be quite cumbersome to do that. So it can, uh, can take really some a lot of times to find and in, to do the correct uh, to identify the correct toy data sets. And because it's a lot of time and a lot of energy, we want to reward the people that take this time to create these toy data sets. So what we do, um, we store all the data sets um, uh, in Zenodo to get a DOI. So some sort of also way that uh, uh, share. Uh, so it's, it's a way to give credit to the people, but it's also a good way for us to store the data sets uh, on the long run and then be sure that this data will be always available. So once you are ready to share your toy data sets, so you should store that on Zenodo. So for, for these tutorials, I created already uh, from my, on my side uh, the, 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 the toy data sets. So I will upload that to, to Zenodo. So how do I do that? So I go to Zenodo, I open Zenodo, I log in with my, I should have log out. So I, I log in with my GitHub uh, account there. Um, and then once I'm there, I can create a new upload. Um, oop, wrong one. Sorry, it's on the top here. New upload here. Um, and then I can shoot the file that I want to add. So it's only one small file that's called here. Um, then I start upload that once I'm done. Um, then if it's progress, it's green or good. Then I want to add that to the Galaxy training community. So it's where we store everything. So to be sure that all, we find all the data set there. Then I select which type of data is it. So it's an input data sets. Uh, so it's a data set. I put a title. So I will put training data for Copernicus, Copernicus. Um, data retrieval training. I put the author, so I would put my name, but anyone that's in University of Freiburg, but I can add as many people as I want. So I can put my orchid. I always forgot my orchid, so I will not do that now. Um, then I can add someone else, so Anne. Um, I don't remember affiliation, but good. Then you you put some descriptions. So here, uh, this are the data needed for the tutorial retrieve permit data from. Copernicus, and I can explain where the data come from. This data set, these are the data. These data sets come from blah, 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 blah. Something. So if you go, if you look at inspecting in Zenodo, the different uh, uh, data set available in the Galaxy training network can give you an inspiration of what to put there. Um, here you say that you the access right are open access. The licenses should be the CC BY so Creative Commons um, 4.0, and then you can add some funding if you need or something else. You save that. Um, I have, I have an issue with my Orchid ID always. Um, I, I always forgot my Orchid ID. Sorry, I need to find my Orchid ID. Here and I put my orchid ID, and then you can save. And once you are saved, you can publish it. You understand that. And then you got a new entry on the Nodo where you can copy the link here and you can get a DOI already there. Okay. And then, um, so we have a workflow, we have uh, data available, and now we can create the skeleton of the tutorial. So what is this tutorial.md that we can see here? So if we look at the tutorial.md, uh, you can see that you have on the top, so if you get at the raw data there, um, you can see that you have some metadata on the top that uh, are interesting to, 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 for, for us, it helps, it helps to build the website and make it 
looking nicely. So the metadata is what appears mostly there. Um, it's helped also to say which who are contributing there, what are the, the time estimation, the learning objective, the links to the nodal, the title of the tutorials. And then um, the tutorials is written in Markdown. So you have Markdown and you are, we have some specific, some, some specific uh, formattings to, to create um, these uh, boxes like this here that you can see. And you see in the tutorials, so you have these hands on boxes that are the, the ones that are interesting. So, how to get your data into Galaxy, but also how to run the tutorials here. For example, here you have this. Uh, whoop, I cannot. So, here, for example, you have one hands on section where you say use data mesh. So, and with the different parameters that can be that needs to be added for the tutorials. For the for the work for the step there, and this will be rendered in a nice way. Um, but for that, I think that can be a bit cumbersome because it takes so you need to go to check which parameters you need to format it in the correct way. Uh, formatting all the table the the different boxes can be it's a, it's, it's, it can be uh, quite annoying. Um, so we did a lot of work for the Galaxy 20 network to try to make it that as simple as possible. So uh, what we created is we, we use the Planimo uh, tool that is used for developing uh, tools for Galaxy. And we added some comments to help developing training materials. So these tools are several comments. And the main one is one to help initiating or creating a new trainings or new tutorials based on the workflow. And that will add the different boxes with the different steps of your workflow with the correct parameters. And uh, yes, that's it. And then it will add the workflow in the correct locations in the, in the workflow folder. And and if you provide a Zenodo link there, you can create also this data library YAML file. So this data library YAML file is really uh, interesting because it's, it takes the data from, it links to the data from Zenodo and can help to, 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 pro, to propagate um, data library on a Galaxy server. For example, if we go to, to the European Galaxy server, you go to share data, data libraries. Um, you can see, so if you look for, ah, where are there? Galaxy. So I can search for GTN. So you have the GTN material here. And for each topics, for example, yeah, you can, you can see that the data are there. So we have for assembly, we have the microblast and we have the, all the, oh, interesting. Not a good, the best example then. Um, I will go to transcriptomic then. If you go to transcriptomic, if you go to the reference-based RNA-seq analysis, you can see that you have all the data set that are needed for your workflow, for your for your training that are available there. And we can do automatically uh, um, filling this uh, data libraries uh, using this uh, data library.yaml file. So I go back to my domain instance. Okay. Um, so how to create a skeleton of your tutorials um, using this Planimo. So you could use the command lines if you want to, but we also created a small web server to help um, to help creating, to avoid having to install Planimo locally and to run that. So how do you do that? So you first need to make your public workflow public. So um, if you go to workflow, you have your workflow that you just created here. So my workflow is there. So I need to put it public. So I go there, I click on share, and then I click on make uh, the workflow accessible and publish. And then my workflow will be public. And if you look at the URL um, and from any URL that where URL where you, on which you will manage your workflow, you see that you have that end by ID equals something. And this something is what we call the workflow ID. And we will need this workflow ID later. So you know where to, you can find it. So now you can open the, the 
web server that we developed that is called PTDK uh, for Planimo Training Development Kit. So it can take a bit of time the first time to, to run because it's it's building it. Um, and then it generates it generates the skeleton of a new tutorial. So you need to first uh, give it a tutorial name. So I will call it retrieve. Oh no, yeah, the tutorial name. The tutorial name will be the name of the folder um, that we will put here. So the name of this folder here. So here we will put climate data retrieval Copernicus. The name of the tutorials, the title of the tutorial. So which what will appear on the top of the tutorials. Um, then you need to say in which Galaxy instance you develop, you, you put your public workflow. So currently we, we, we get only these three Galaxy instance, but we aim to open to more Galaxy instance on the long run. So the idea of the workflow, as I mentioned, is the one here. And you can also provide the real help to Zenitu. I will not uh, do that because currently it's a bit broken and I don't want to, to, to show broken things. So it, I will fix that uh, once I'm done. So, and then I submit and what is doing is taking the, it's running on the back and creating the, the skeleton. And once you are done, it's explaining exactly what you need to do afterwards. So first you need to download the archive of the tutorials um and you need to save it uh, i will save it in this folder um and then you see if, if you can you open the, the 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 archive so i will extract it here and you see that you have uh, different things so you have the tutorial.md tutorial.bib so the bib tech that can go to with the tutorials you have a, for, a, a folder with the workflow and you have the tool, but I will not mention that. Um, you could open the, the workflow, the tutorial.md, and I will do that quickly. And you see that you have some metadata that has been, oops, sorry, um, has been put on the top um, with the name of the tutorial that you had. Uh, some not the link because we didn't provide it we with some question so things you need to fill now um the contributors um and then a, a st first structure of the tutorials with first an introduction the agenda the title of the different sections you see that the first one of the things first things you need to do is to get data and we provide already a structure of the different uh, of the end zone section, how it looks like. So create a new history, get the, the data from Zenodo or from the shared data library, rename the data set, check the data types, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, um, then the title of a new section where the different steps are appearing. And then you see, if you look there, that it's extracting the Copernicus, uh, sec the Copernicus uh, step. And you see that it put okay. It's here is the name of the tool that you need to run with which parameters you need to put. So do you provide as a file name and what are the inputs that you need to provide? And then you have some extra information there that you know you can edit later. So we we did that. So we did the PTDK. So we we generate that. Um, we check the content and now the question is how we can add that to the Galaxy training materials. So either you do locally, you can clone the repository locally and get the, the correct structure locally. Um, so we have a specific tutorials to explain you how to get um, to, to run with the command lines. Um, we have also uh, figured out lately that we can use a tool that is called git pod. So if you go to git pod, um, you can um, log in with GitHub and then you can create a workspace. Um, and I, you can search for workspace uh, from a specific GitHub repository. So here with the GitHub, uh, the Galaxy, the training materials from the Galaxy project, then it will take a bit of time to prepare the container. So it will create uh, some sort of, of, of a nice interface to interact with the with the, with the training materials from GitHub. And even to build the, 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 the website locally to see how it looks like. 
So I will do that quickly. It just takes a bit of time to build that. And then we will, I will show you how to add uh, the, the tutorials there. Um, as, a, as it's building, you can, as I mentioned already quickly, so if the workflow, it's not available on the, on the public Galaxy server that is listed, so one of the three that I mentioned, what I re can recommend you to run is to run the tools via the command lines locally. So you need to get the ID, you need to get the API key to your Galaxy, to the, this Galaxy instance, um, and then you, you need to, to get the repository locally. Or uh, you can even use Gitpad for doing that also. Um, we, we tried, so you can also run exactly that, but on Gitpad. And then you need to, to install Planemo with pip install Planemo. And then you can generate the skeleton of your tutorials by adapting what I put that here. And same, you don't need the, the, the Zenodo link is not mandatory. It's just an, an example. And then it will add the tutorials at the exact correct location where you need to do that. So here, Gitpod built. So if you see, we have the same structure as, as I'm, I showed here, uh, directly on GitHub, but on Gitpod. And you see that we have our climate um, and we can, we have our tutorials and here we want to add one folder. So we can click create new folder um, that with the name of our tutor, so it's, uh, how did I name that tutor, so again, I forgot, um, sorry, the name of the tutorial is Climate Data Retrieval Copernicus, so I add a, a folder here that is named that, and then I can add a file inside. So a new file that is called will be tutorial.md. And in this tutorial, then I can copy directly the content that is there and add that here. And you see that you can, you can see it directly there. And you can change something. So we can add, uh, change your contributors. So, and here it's using the GitHub ID. So my GitHub ID is too, so I change that. I can change something else, whatever. Um, and I can save that. And then I can run the two, the, I can locally run that. So I can make, so check what's going on. And I have a make surf git pod here. So make surf git, oops, sorry. Make surf git pod. And then it will uh, build the the the, the website um, there inside the GitHub already, inside GitHub. So, um, so when you while it's building, so as I mentioned, so it's then once you have that already available. So ah yeah, we need also to add a new folder with the workflow. So workflow. Um, and inside we need to create a new fold, file that is main uh, workflow dot ga and then in which we can copy the content that we had there we can open with text editor we can just oops copy and paste the workflow directly there um, we need also to add a, a new file that is index.md um, and I can copy the content of Oops. here, just mention that here. I need to find the better solution to, to add a full folder directly on GitHub. I did, just didn't find a good way to do that for now. So it's still installing on Gitpod. Uh, it's the first time it's a bit taking sometimes because it needs to install some dependencies, but afterwards, if you run that uh, several times, it can, it's, it's faster. Just to mention, so Gitpod is a nice tool. Um, you can do that for any, GitHub repository, and it's up to 50 hours per month that you can use that, if I'm correct. 
need to to update, to check that again. So you have uh, you you can change. Uh, so once you add that, so okay, we have the infrastructure there, uh, there, and then you see the, you can you should change the question. You should change the objective there, and uh, the key point. Um, adding some content, so a proper introduction to your tutorials. Um, you should um, then get the different sections that you want to do with the different steps that you want to run, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have a dedicated tutorials to explain the different, the different things. Uh, and you can check that this uh, creating content in Markdown tutorials where we explain everything. So what are the different metadata that you, we expect you to put um, and what are the different possibilities um, and with the content, so the different uh, structures. So um, how to add images with captions, um, but also adding uh, alt text, how to write mathematical expression if you need tables, um, but also what are the different boxes that we have there and how you can generate them and how can you add more of them so how to also add these links to the to the to the tools etc 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 so many things i can find here um, so this document is used uh, this tutorial is used as a documentation for the full info how to write a really tutorials so uh, gigpod is still installing uh, everything so it can take some time I'm sorry for that. And so once um, we are done with that, we can uh, put everything on GitHub directly. So here uh, you can afterwards uh, submit your changes. So it's going there. Oops. Oh, uh, okay. We changed the structure lately on the snippets. So it's, sorry. It's, Snippets. I will need to we I, I will fix that. Uh, uh, it will be fixed when you will have run that tutorial. So it's snippets, and if you look, it's a fake q a fake q. Serve. It's my, much faster than before. So now it's building, it's using Jekyll that we used to build the website. And oops, again, snippet. Is it snippet or snippets? Mm -hmm. I really need to fix this issue. I'm sorry for that. Is it good? Ah, it's snippet without an S. So it's um, we have this what we call snippet here. It's a good uh, a good way to, to to explain that. So these snippets are uh, so small. Uh, you can find all the snippet here for FAQ. Um, it's for example, it, it's just a small uh, things that we use uh, several times. Aha, import via link. Where is it? Snippet. FAQ Galaxy. Where is it? Import data sets. Import one. So it's uh, to avoid um, duplication of the content. What we created is we created this small snippet that can be copy passed, that can be imported from one tutorial to the others. Um, and if we need to update one, we can, it's updating only this this small snippet, and then we can, it's updating that for all the tutorials. So you can see here, 
So here is a snippet. So it's not the easiest one, sorry. Attack here. So it's uh, it's just a small markdown with some uh, YAML file on the top. And so it's generated in the website and you can see here. So if you click that one here, here, you can see, I need to allow that. And okay, here you can see you are uh, checking the, the GitHub, uh, the training materials. And if you go to climate, you should have now your retrieve detail data from Copernicus, which is the tutorials we started to develop here. And you see, and you have even the Copernicus uh, looking correctly. And so once you are done, uh, you can submit your day, your, your changes to, to GitHub. So we created two work, two tutorials to explain you how to contribute to GitHub, to, how to submit your changes to GitHub via the interface or via the command lines. And we will create one quick soon, soon to explain how to contribute directly from GitPod. So it's uh, just information It's here. You need to create a branch first and then submit your changes. And on that, uh, I hope, yeah, you can also, sorry, add slides. So I mentioned so you have this slides.html file that you can come with the tutorials. And we have a dedicated tutorials to explain how to add slides. And then you can do that. So in conclusion, to create a new tutorial, so first you need to determine the topics where you want to store the tutorials. You need to create a workflow, uh, find a good data sets, and upload that to Zenodo. Create the skeleton of the tutorials using, uh, you can use the Planemo uh, and the server, web server for that. Uh, add the skeleton to the training materials, uh, write the content of the tutorials, keep track of the changes uh, using GitHub, add slide if you want, and submit everything to GitHub, to GitHub as a pull request. And once it's merged, then it will be available as these tutorials online directly. And we create it just to make it quicker for the next time. Here are a summary step-by-step. -step. And on that, um, I would like to thank you and 